everybody. Thank you for being here with us today. We all really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to be here with us. I am here today to talk to you about the extremely challenging job that some of you might already do, or perhaps will be doing. I'm referring to caregiving for a person who is suffering from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Uh, my name is Lisa Skinner. I am an Alzheimer's disease and dementia behavior specialist, an elder care advisor, and the author of the award-winning and best-selling book, Not All Who Wander Need Be Lost. And the new book that's just about to come out called Truth, Lies, and Alzheimer's, It's Secret Faces, co-written with me by Douglas W. Collins. So we also train caregivers how to care for those suffering from this heartbreaking disease. And I do understand that being a caregiver to someone suffering from Alzheimer's disease and dementia is without a doubt, one of the most daunting roles a caregiver can undertake. There are so many aspects of living with dementia that are unexpected and can surface out of nowhere at any time. I call these the hidden or secret faces of dementia. As many of you know, they show up unannounced and are as unpredictable as a California earthquake. And that's coming from an old California girl. Um, but that's why it's so important to be prepared and to be equipped with as many tools as you can collect. So today, let's take a closer look at what living with dementia is truly like for a person and how preparing yourself with these strategies can truly make a difference to you and the person you're caring for. It's very important to take steps to learn about the many challenges you will be facing in your role as a caregiver and steps you can take to help yourself and to be more effective in administering care. You want to be able to engage in activities and actions that can improve in any situation rather than exacerbate a situation and see it grow into a disaster. So let's take a minute and think about this. So imagine growing up in small town America. You've never been anywhere else, but that place that you grew up and that you're very familiar with. Then you decide to venture out. You want to see more of the world. So you decide to take a trip to a foreign country. You land at the airport, you get off that plane, and you look around and everything is unfamiliar to you. The signs giving you directions are in a foreign language. You feel insecure and handicapped that you cannot even find the baggage claim area. You ask a few people for help, but they look at you like you have two heads. Why? Because they don't understand a word you are saying. So now you're feeling lost and displaced and not sure what you can do or who you can go to for help. You can't find anybody that understands your questions. Now you need to find a way to get to your hotel, but again, all the signage is in a foreign language and you still cannot find anybody who speaks your language. So you begin to feel anxious and scared. The best you are able to figure out is that boarding this certain bus will take you to your hotel. So you get on board and pray this was the right decision. The bus takes off and hits the road. Cars are flying by in all directions and you start feeling dizzy because the bus is on the opposite side of the road from what you're used to. And the driver is on the opposite side of the bus from what you're used to. And it feels like you're definitely gonna crash. 
You begin to feel panicky and then you ask yourself, what was I thinking by coming here? What I have just described is a very similar scenario to a person living with dementia. But that person is not visiting a foreign land. They are most often in their own home, but this is their, their new world and it's every single day of their lives. When you cannot communicate and get your needs and wants heard, then you find alternative ways to do so. And they typically manifest in the way of a variety of behaviors that we as caregivers and family members see every day. The most common association that people make with Alzheimer's disease is that people who suffer from it can't remember things. Well, this is true. Memory loss is the hallmark of living with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. However, the scope of the disease and the way it affects people is far more complicated than just memory loss and confusion. So my goal is to zoom outside of this paradigm of it being exclusively a memory loss condition and shift people's understanding of just how dramatically this disease impacts the lives of those who live with it, as well as the lives of their caregivers and family members and friends. It affects everybody. Other aspects of living with Alzheimer's disease that people are not even aware of or are not aware that they are a common part of the disease, for example, are wandering, delusions, hallucinations, repetitive behaviors, not recognizing loved ones, suspiciousness, and paranoia. But these are just some of the common behaviors associated with dementia. There are many, many more. Today, I'm gonna help you understand why they occur, as well as how to recognize them and how to effectively react and respond to them. It can make a huge difference to the relationship you have with the person you're caring for and your loved one. You know, living with dementia is unlike anything you can imagine. It's like Alice's unexpected journey into Wonderland when she falls into a rabbit hole and then enters a world unlike anything she's ever known. It was one that was completely unfamiliar to her. And that is very similar to what people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia experience. They enter a world that is completely unfamiliar to them. Let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So if the person you are caring for suddenly doesn't recognize you and calls you by a different name, well, how would you react to that? I know it's very hurtful for people, especially when it's uh, a relative and they don't recognize you, but Keep in mind, this is the disease, it's not the person. Uh, another example, if the person you are caring for begins insisting that her spouse is on his way over to pick her up, and you know that can't be possible because that spouse has been deceased for years, but how would you respond to that? Again, if the person you are caring for accuses you of stealing something of theirs, but it turns out they really misplaced it, which is often the case, how would you react to that accusation? And one more example that's actually very fascinating. If you are leading the person you care for to the shower, as you do probably regularly, and then you enter the bathroom and out of nowhere, she starts screaming, no shower, no shower. Would you even know to stop to consider that person may have just seen herself in the mirror, saw her reflection? 
and didn't recognize herself and was convinced there was a stranger standing in that bathroom just about to watch her take her clothes off to get into the shower. And that is what triggered that response. Well, if you didn't know about the phenomenon called stranger in the mirror, then of course you wouldn't have even considered that as what triggered that particular behavior at that particular moment. But believe it or not, it actually can be an easy fix if you know an effective way to respond to that reaction. So here's one of the solutions that you could try. Lead the person back out of the bathroom and let her become interested in something else for a short period of time. Then you go back into the bathroom, cover up that mirror with a towel or a sheet, and then go back and try leading the person you care for back into the bathroom to try giving a shower again. So this time, if the person does not have access to the mirror and can't see their reflection in it, they won't think there's a stranger standing there waiting to watch them undress. Well, these are just a few of the challenges that caregivers face on an ongoing basis when caring for someone with a damaged brain. And we know that it takes very specialized training to know how to effectively respond to situations that arise, just like I described. But why do these things happen? Well, in my experience, I have found it is equally important to understand what's at the root of these, the cause of these behaviors and these responses and reactions. And unfortunately, we know that no amount of reasoning can take the person experiencing a delusion out of their belief. So we must rely on alternative strategies to manage these behaviors. Now, according to the Alzheimer's Association, approximately one out of three Alzheimer's disease sufferers will develop paranoia or suspiciousness because people with brain disease suffer from impaired reasoning. They may easily misinterpret others' intentions and have difficulty understanding what is being communicated to them. Their ability to separate fact from fiction has become impaired. So in a person living with dementia, the ability to perceive things the same way we do has become diminished and will affect that person's judgment both visually and conceptually. Their level of confusion will increase over time because they are losing the ability to make sense of what their senses actually take in. So consequently, this can produce several adverse reactions such as fright and or combative behavior. You know, the brain is truly at the center of our thought processes and is central to our lives. It takes in information from our daily experiences and enables us to make sense of our world. Our memories are the threads that sew our lives together in sequence and continuity. However, when our memory begins to fail, that tie unravels. That tie to our life unravels. Just like in Stranger in the Mirror, the example I gave you earlier, when a person with dementia does not even recognize their own reflection in the mirror, they actually see in the mirror a younger version of themselves. This is, has to do with the short-term memory kind of malfunctioning for a very short period of time. And the first memory problems with Alzheimer's disease typically occur with recent or short-term memory loss. The person has difficulty recalling the events that have happened most recently. However, their long-term memories can remain intact far into the disease. So let me demonstrate why this happens. 
Think of a person's short-term memory as having a light switch that can actually be turned off and on, just like a light. When the switch is turned on, it's functioning normally. But when that switch gets flipped off, the short-term memory malfunctions and the person with dementia must pull from their long-term memories, which are still intact, to put their life into a perspective that makes sense for them because their long-term memories are all that's available to them when that short-term memory switch is all of a sudden turned off and it can happen without notice. This sends a person back in time to a different period of their life. But for the time being, that does become their reality until that short-term memory switch is turned back on. Now, in the beginning stages of the disease, the short-term memory switch is on more than it's off. In the mid-stage of the disease, it switches from on to off, on to off, on to off, again with no warning whatsoever and then by the end of the disease the switch is off more than it's on but in a lot with a lot of people that switch is off permanently so it's not uncommon um, for this to happen um, the person suffering from dementia will have no recent memories and is stuck literally stuck somewhere in their past so you must listen for the cues of what they're talking about in order to determine what part of the life, their life, they have regressed to. Are they talking about where their parents, like they live at home and their children? Are they talking about the job they go to every day? Then you can do what we call join their reality. And this is a technique and a methodology that we use and teach it in our training course. As you can only imagine, a person experiencing lost memories may feel confused when the world as they knew it starts disappearing and their past and their present collide. And this is exactly what happens. Well, undoubtedly, this can elicit feelings of fear and anger as well as unveil uncharacteristic behaviors of that person, perhaps behaviors you've never seen in your loved one or person personality changes that you don't recognize. Confusion can be triggered by lost trains of thought, mixed up memories, and sudden change, even a sudden change in the environment or a change from one caregiver to another can trigger a negative behavior. So what we call reminiscence therapy can help people with dementia cope with the loss of their core selves, which is another common occurrence of living with dementia because our memories keep us plugged into the work and play of our lives and what we do and how we do it. It also allows us to understand how we fit into the social fabric because our memories store key habits, beliefs, and values that make us unique and individual. But sadly, dementia profoundly affects a person's ability to keep their world in order and therefore impacts the way they live in that world and how they get along with other people in it and the way they interpret everything. Uh, most people become confused when situations go beyond the limits of their new thinking abilities. Then, as the disease progresses, the mind's ability to avoid confusion declines because they lose that the normal filters and protections they once had when their brains were healthy. So you will learn to put your Sherlock Holmes hat on. And through the process of elimination, learn the underlying reason or reasons which can be uncovered. 
Normal thinking abilities allow us to control our emotions. It allows us to adjust our responses and judge the difference between a big deal and a little deal. But with dementia, that ability is gradually lost. So Alzheimer's disease is all about looking backwards as loved ones lose their precious memories and as their short-term memories erode and they struggle with cognitive loss. Our seminars help caregivers identify memory loss and behavior issues while maintaining a focus on the future. We look backwards to the memories that are lost to our loved ones from Alzheimer's disease, but we look forward to a new treatments and potential cures for Alzheimer's and dementia that are already on the horizon. For instance, adult stem cells are showing the promise of regenerating damaged neural cells to improve motor functions of the brain. You can check this out on our website, truthliesalzheimers.com. Read the forward by Dr. Anand Srivastava to explore the advances in regenerative therapy for Alzheimer's disease that he has been researching for over 30 years. Today, over 6 million people in the U.S. live with Alzheimer's disease. That means every 66 seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. The Alzheimer's Association projects that by the year 2050, that number will more than double. And then due to the COVID pandemic, we are seeing shifting changes on how we care for people living with this heart-wrenching disease. But one thing is certain, we will be needing lots of specially trained caregivers to take care of all the people that we know will be developing this disease in the next 20, 30 years. That might seem like it's a long time off, but think about how fast the last 20, 25 years have gone by. It's actually right around the corner. And again, this is exactly what we do. We educate and train caregivers new and effective ways of communicating with people who can no longer communicate with you. We provide you with those tools. And there are many effective tools out there that can make your jobs a lot less stressful. It can help take the guesswork out of a lot of the situations that trust me will arise on a daily basis. Wouldn't it be helpful for you to have those tools in your tool belt? My co-author Doug Collins and I have a new book out and workbook and training course called Truth, Lies and Alzheimer's, It's Secret Faces. Our website again is truthliesalzheimers.com. We'll be offering continuing education credits for completing our courses. And as part of the training course, we will emphasize the importance of being aware of things like stranger in the mirror phenomenon. So you as caregivers and family members will know what signs and behaviors to look for so you can put your loved one at ease if these situations we've talked about today do arise. We will also explore strategies such as joining their reality, reminiscence therapy, and life stations among many others. I wanna thank you again for attending this informational caregiver presentation today, my hope is that I have given you a realistic insight into the world in which someone with Alzheimer's disease really lives in. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much.